Hey guys welcome to my channel today we are going to be going to what if Luffy was the captain of the Storm Pirates part 3 make sure to like and subscribe it helps and it means the world to me also join the discord if you also want I started a Patreon memberships are $1 per month you get early access for $2 per month you get early access and exclusive content $3 per month you get early access fan requests and exclusive content Patreon link in the description disclaimer. There may be mature content and maybe 18 plus content and I don't own this story with that stuff out of the way let's begin chapter 28, Port Castillas what is going on? The voice of her boss reached her ears, Crocodile, one of the seven warlords of the sea. Standing behind Miss Sunday, Crocodile had a devil smirk on his face, a cigarette between his teeth as he inhaled on it. Not much, just some small fries acting like a big deal, and people are praying for you to come and save them. Nico Robin informed him turning around to face her boss with a neutral look on her face, her piercing blue eyes like ice along with a pretty smile. A sneer escaped his lips before his eyes looked at his subordinate seriously. I'm not interested in little kids playing pirates. I will deal with them soon enough, I'm interested in anything big that I should know about, Crocodile demanded, slowly menacingly approaching Robin. The woman didn't look phased by his figure or his strength. Well, apparently Portgus Ace has been seen in Sandy Island. Robin informed him, this time her voice a bit grave, mentioning the second-in-command of Whitebeard Pirates. This new information caused Crocodile to stop dead on his track, his eyes narrowing slightly. So, Whitebeard has sent one of his pets, or maybe he's here on its own? I wonder. Any idea why Whitebeard's pet is here? Crocodile prompted, his voice louder when he spoke the Emperor's name. Not many knew, but Crocodile deeply hated the Emperor, something no one knew why. A sly smirk grew on Robin's face as she put a hand on her right ear as if wanting to hear something far away. A little ear told me he's searching for Blackbeard and Straw Hat Luffy, the same ones who defeated Mr. Three, Robin explained slyly. A groan escaped Crocodile's lips, when he had eventually figured that Mr. Three had been defeated by a bunch of no-name pirates, he had been livid, but in the end, it didn't really matter, they were walking towards their own grave, sooner or later they would arrive in Alabasta to stop him because of Princess Vivi. He would personally kill their captain, to show him why he was a warlord. I see, I don't know who this Blackbeard is, but someone like the second commander of Whitebeard shouldn't be taken lightly. Crocodile spoke, knowing someone like him was dangerous, especially after his little incident in Sabaody with the Celestial Dragon, increasing his bounty in the process. Should we engage him? Robin asked carefully, while she didn't know Ace, she had been surprised by his actions in Sabaody. She didn't exactly want to fight him before she got some answers first. No, if he is not after us, then we don't need to, as long as he's not a nail in our feet, then we have no business to step on it, Crocodile said before turning to walk towards the door that leads outside. Now is time for me to play the hero, Crocodile said mockingly before disappearing, soon reappearing at the top of the building, looking down at the pirates causing havoc on his town, his presence was quickly noticed by everyone around. Crocodile has arrived. We are saved. Please save us, Warlord. Kill the scummy pirates once and for all. Crocodile laughed, hearing them cheer on him as the little pirates aimed their guns at him. Crocodile didn't try to move away as they fired their guns, only hitting sand, where the bullet hole should be instead was sand. If you won't attack, then allow me, Crocodile taunted before raising his hand, swinging it down, shouting, Sandstorm. A huge sandstorm formed where the pirates were, and people ran away from the storm shielding their eyes from the increased amount of sand in the air. Soon the storm disappeared, showing the three pirates lying on the ground, their eyes were no longer in their eye sockets, blood leaking out from almost every part of their bodies, the sand had moved so fast that it had pierced their bodies like a bullet, and the sandstorm had millions of these bullets flying around in a ridiculous speed. The sand had turned red from the blood. Seeing the pirates dead, the people came out from where they were hiding before cheering for Crocodile for saving them from the pirates. The warlord simply smiled slyly, Nico Robin hiding behind a corner with a frown, seeing the ignorant people cheer on someone like Crocodile. Going merry. It had been weeks since they left Drum Island, Luffy, Usopp, and Chopper were busy trying to catch something but so far, no luck. Luffy's stomach started protesting, telling him to eat meat, the straw hat captain was drooling from his mouth, thinking about all the food hidden in the ship by Sanji. We need meat, Luffy shouted at the sky, the luck seemed to have run out. There was light on the horizon, only a dark abyss, how could he survive like this? Was this truly the end? Don't worry, Luffy, we will soon reach Sandy Island, once we get there, you can eat as much as you want, Vivi's voice reached his ears, snapping him out of his stupid thoughts. 
that seemed to do the trick since he straightened up. Perhaps he just needs to wait, sooner or later, they would catch something or maybe sneak at Sanji's kitchen at night and eat food. Sanji, prepare tea for everyone, Nami ordered, standing on the deck, looking at the weather, perhaps a cup of tea could help her captain. Of course, Nami Swan, Sanji said with a perverted grin on his face, full pervert mode on, much to Zoro's annoyance, who was busy doing push-ups. As Sanji was preparing the tea, the crew noticed steam coming out of the ocean, wondering what it was all about. They got a closer look, especially Usopp, who used binoculars. What's happening? Chopper asked with a hint of fear in his voice, taking a step back and standing behind Zoro's feet as if it was an indestructible shield. I have read about this, this is an underwater volcano, Nami informed the crew with a smile, the first time any of them had seen one, Sanji started chatting that Nami was smart. Underwater volcano? Didn't know there was such a thing. Usopp commented, not worried since he didn't think it was harmful. Actually, there are more volcanoes underwater than above water, a few thousand years later, and an island will be born here, Nami said, looking at the ocean around them with amazement. That would be an amazing sight to see, Chopper commented, not hiding behind Zoro anymore, looking at the approaching steam with awe. Much to Nami's surprise, Luffy was quiet, too quiet. Luffy, you alright? She asked thinking that perhaps something was bothering him. Ah, everything is all right. You know, my grandpa once told me that this is how the red line was created, he said that it is speculated that a long time ago, underwater volcanoes all around the world suddenly erupted at the same time, eventually creating the red line, Luffy said, in a tone as if he remembered something unpleasant. That makes sense, that could explain it, Najiko remarked, just as the ship was sealing through the steam. The steam temperature was nothing that could bother them. But Luffy heard the voices near them, as they were sailing forward, he noted that two voices were going away while one of them was stuck here. He briefly glanced at his crew, wondering if any of them noticed it, but it seemed they didn't notice shit. Releasing a sigh, the ship came out of the steam, only then did Usopp notice the man hanging on the fishing tackle. Well, hello there, friends, the strange man greeted them, causing Usopp and Chopper to scream, taken entirely by surprise. The man was clearly some type of cross-dresser, wearing flamboyant ballet clothes with a swan theme. He was wearing a pink overcoat and blue medieval-like garments, with his shorts appearing almost like a large ball around the man's hips and thighs. He wore heavy makeup, and his exposed legs were rather hairy. Nami had seen all kinds of strange clothes, but this one was at the top. Where did you come from? Sanji asked, coming out of the kitchen when he heard the screams. Before the strange man could answer. He was in another ship, when we were in the steam, he was caught by Usopp's fishing rod. This also means that yet again, you were taken by surprise, Luffy said with an innocent smile at the end, stretching out his arms much to the horror of his crew, knowing their captain didn't like when they didn't show results in their hockey training. Who are you? Nami asked, pointing at the strange man who, after being addressed, he straight up. Oh, my name is Bon Clay, it is good to meet you all, he said, wanting to kiss Nami's hand, but she pulled her hand away before he could. Perhaps you should go back to your ship before it gets too far. Usopp suggested looking at him. Whirling around but more like dancing, he looked at Usopp. I can't swim. I'm a devil fruit user, he informed him, drawing the attention of everyone. Which one? Najiko asked curiously, wondering if he perhaps had some kind of powerful devil fruit. Bon Clay smiled before turning at the straw hat boy, extending his arm, touching his face, they were suddenly two Luffy standing there. One was wearing normal clothes and the other with the weird clothes of Bon Clay. This is my power. I can turn into anyone whose face I touch, he explained, showing a couple of different faces before touching the face of Usopp, Chopper, Zoro, and finally Nami. Not just my face, but my body changes as well, he revealed with Nami's face before removing his upper clothes, Sanji went flying with a nosebleed, drooling like a dog. Aban screamed in pain when Nami suddenly hit his head with as much armament hockey as she could, causing a big swelling on top of his head. Don't try that, or I will turn you to ash. Nami screamed with shark teeth and fire in her eyes to Bon, who was crying anime tears. Man, you guys are brutal, he murmured, holding his head in pain, Luffy laughed at his antics. You're funny but don't actually try that again, Luffy said with a cheerful tone, but everyone could pick on the thread of his words. Standing up, he gave him a thumbs up with a wink, his teeth suddenly shining like a star. You have my word, he promised, just as Nojiko was about to ask how he would return back to his ship. A new ship returned with two people on board, seeing his ship approaching, Bon jumped on the deck railings, 
standing only on one foot, turning at the straw hats. It was fun, I hope we see each other again, he said before jumping to a ship with the strength of one leg. He was a funny man, Luffy commented, smiling as the other ship sailed away from them. Where were you, Mr. Two? The straw hat crew heard as the other ship sailed away, making almost everyone gasp in shock. He was Mr. Two. Usopp screamed in fear, his tongue hanging out of his mouth. Luffy narrowed his eyes at the ship before turning to face his crew with a serious look on his face. You didn't know his face, Vivi? Luffy asked seriously, sounding like a captain. I didn't really know him, all I knew was that he was someone who wears heavy makeup, wears ridiculous clothes, and likes ballet, earning a deadpan look from Zoro, who was checking his swords. That pretty much describes that man, he remarked before turning to look at his captain. He just touched our faces, we should do something about that, he said, knowing the last thing they needed was being in the company of someone acting like someone of their crew. Vivi, who felt stupid for not recognizing him, suddenly looked at Luffy with a pale face. One of the faces he showed was my father's face, she revealed, remembering the familiar face of her father. Zoro frowned, his hand resting against the hilt of his swords. Who knows what he can do with the face of a king? He can easily do something and put all the blame on him he said grimly, making Vivi turn paler, knowing that was most likely the reason he had that face in the first place. I should get there as soon as possible, Vivi thought, her forehead resting against the railing, she suddenly felt a hand on her shoulder, calming her slightly. Don't worry, Vivi. We will soon end this rebellion, nothing bad will happen, I will personally punish Crocodile for what he did, Luffy said warmly, trying to reassure her that everything would be alright. Vivi smiled, her hand touching his hand, squeezing it tightly, already feeling better. Thank you, Luffy, she said before wiping away the tears from her face, turning to look at him with a hint of blush on her face, something noticed by Nojiko and Nami, the latter having a devil smirk on her face. We will need a way to know who's the real one, Zoro suggested, soon, it was decided for every member, including Vivi and her duck, to draw an X symbol on their arms before covering them with bandages. Three days later. For the last three days. Luffy had tortured his crew with his so-called training, and it was mainly observation hockey, the crew didn't know why he didn't allow them to train their armament hockey but didn't question it. With a bat in his hand that no one knew where he got it from, Luffy was walking around his crew, all of them blindfolded, sitting on the main deck, only their observation hockey left to save them from getting hit. A swing, Usopp dodged immediately, Luffy smiled, it seemed from everyone in the crew that Usopp had the best observation hockey behind him. Another swing, Nami dodged, and so did Sanji, Zoro, and Nojiko, Vivi and Chopper failed, one thing Luffy had noticed quickly about Nojiko was her armament hockey was already good enough, he figured she could get excellent soon, the only thing left was for her to either eat a devil fruit or choose a weapon, a sword perhaps, or maybe a pipe, or maybe Nami's old staff. Some of you might be curious why we are training observation hockey, Luffy started gaining the attention of his crew as he walked around, the bat still in his hand. Mr. Two has the ability to turn as one of us, but if you have good enough observation hockey, then it won't matter, he can change his face all he wants, but his inner voice will never change, Luffy explained seeing that he had distracted his whole crew with what he said, at that moment he used his speed to hit each one and see if any of them would react in time to dodge. Or at least try to dodge. Usopp, Sanji, and Nami almost dodged, but everyone else didn't even see it coming, Zoro, because he was better at armament hockey holding their heads in pain, only then did Luffy remove their blindfolds, allowing them to stand up, Zoro had an annoyed look on his face, but it was directed at himself rather his captain. We are finished here with the training. Now let's make our way to Crocodile, Luffy shouted, but just as he shouted, sudden waves rocked against the ship, making some stumble back, everyone turned around to see a sea monster coming out of the water. Ah Usopp and Chopper screamed, hugging each other for dear life while Luffy and Zoro were preparing to eat it. Meet Luffy shouted, drooling, ready to throw a bolt of lightning at him, Zoro was preparing to slice him to pieces, and Sanji raised his leg. No, you can't hurt him, Vivi screamed at them with a raised fist, the sea monster dubbed back below the waves. Why not? Luffy asked, with a sad look that he couldn't enjoy a new type of meat. Sea cat is a sacred animal in Alabasta, you can't eat it, she ordered, looking at the three of them down. Of course, your majesty, Sanji agreed immediately with hearts while kneeling. It wouldn't hurt to tell us sooner, Zoro grumbled before returning to his training. Luffy heard his stomach demanding more food, his head hanging down against the ship's railing, his eyes briefly glancing at Chopper before looking at Vivi, whose anger disappeared a bit. Don't worry, 
Luffy, once we reach Alabasta, you can eat as much as you want. The appearance of the sea cat proves that we are close, Vivi said, hoping her words would help. So do these? Nojiko said, pointing towards the horizon. Everyone turned to see what she was pointing at, only to see ships sailing towards Alabasta, all of them were much larger than going merry. They're the ships of Baroque Works. The agents are gathering, Vivi said with a grimace. They must be the billions then, they are the officer agents underlings. Unlike Whiskey Peak, these guys are elite, this won't be easy, Vivi said, frowning. Can't we just attack them now? They don't know who we are. We can easily launch a surprise attack but having so many ships against us, Usopp suggested walking over to the cannons of the ships. Well, I can easily deal with them, one simple strike, and I will sink them, Luffy suggested, his hand engulfed in lightning. There's no need, Captain, they're nothing but small fries, we can deal with them later, right now, let's deal with what we came here to do, Zoro suggested, his hand on the hilt of his special sword. You're right. We eat first and then we can kick Crocodile's ass," Luffy proclaimed, Nami giggled at his words, trusting someone like Luffy to say that eating food was more important. Sandy Island. A large group of marines was walking through the small town, one of them was smoking two cigarettes, near him was Tashii, who noticed the number of people gathered around a restaurant. What's happening there? Smoker questioned his soldier, seeing the people who had gathered from afar, making their way towards the restaurant, soon, a marine approached them. Sir it seems a client had fallen victim of a desert strawberry, he was talking with the chef of the place when he collapsed dead on the spot, and people inside are afraid, the marine reported saluting towards the captain, smoker cock an eyebrow. Desert strawberry? What is that? He asked his soldier, inhaling his cigarettes. I have read about them apparently in Alabasta, there are these spiders that look like a strawberry, but if you eat them, you will get infected, and within a few days, you will drop dead, not only that. But the poison spreads around your body, it's contagious, it can spread from skin to skin contact, Tashigi explained to her captain who grumbled. But couldn't help but have a feeling that something was off. It seems ignorance can get you killed in this country, Smoker remarked. Meanwhile, inside the restaurant, every client was looking at the young man with shock and pity, the chef was the only one who wasn't trying to keep his distance like the others. He was a tall, strong young man with black hair that was curled. An orange wide-brimmed hat with two charms on the rim was perched atop the mentioned hair. A string of red beads held the two charms, one of which had a smiling face and the other a frowning face, to the hat. He sported a blue bag belted around his left leg, black boots, and black knee-length shorts with an eyelet-studded orange belt. Over his right hip, he wore a short second belt with a big red A on the silver buckle. At his left hip, a dagger with a green sheath was hanging. He had an orange elbow guard, a tattoo of the initials S on his upper arm a log pose and a red and white striped bracelet on his left wrist. In order to match the string of beads holding the two charms on his hat, he wore a red beaded necklace. Two long, orange side straps protruded from the hat and came together at a sizable medallion of a bull's skull with orange tassels. The enormous tattoo of a skull with a white mustache and a manji behind it that was visible on his back was another pretty distinctive characteristic. The poor soul, he's still holding the fork, one said with sadness. Man didn't know something could kill you so quickly. Someone else commented. Huh. What's happening here? The young man suddenly asked, seeing everyone suddenly freaking out. You're alive? Everyone screamed, the young man was still confused before he whipped his face using the dress of one lady nearby, the said lady screamed flustered, before running away. Man, it seems I fell asleep, the young man said, earning deadpan looks from everyone. You fell asleep, we were worried for you, everyone screamed except the chef, who chuckled before handing him a glass of water. Seeing the strange people talk like that, the young man turned toward the chef, who handed him a glass of water. You hired them? Are these your actors? The young man asked, pointing at the people behind him, eating meat from his pork. The chef simply shook his head, no, we are just happy that you didn't die, the chef said, suddenly, the young man fell flat on the dish again, sleeping. Wake up, you idiot, everyone screamed, not full this time. So, there you are. A voice spoke as a person walked inside holding some kind of weapon. Ace woke up before turning around to face his guest. You have got so nerved to show yourself, Port Castillas, the second commander of Whitebeard Pirates, Smoker spoke, his fist slowly becoming smoke but not actually attacking. E? Everyone inside screamed when they heard the identity of the young man, before starting to talk to each other. I knew I had seen the tattoo before. What should we do? We need to leave, 
These people from Whitebeard Pirates are crazy, especially the commanders, one said as everyone slowly left the restaurant, some from the front door, some from the windows. Ah! Who might you be? The man identified as Ace asked with a smirk, his index finger turned to flame, tipping his hat a little higher. Captain Smoker, I would ask you to surrender yourself, pirate, Smoker demanded, but knowing the pirate wouldn't do that, he was glad that the civilians had left the area, except for the stupid chef, who for some reason was still hanging around. Ace yawned, not at all impressed. Not impressed. I was hoping to see someone else, not you, Ace remarked with a snarky smile, remembering Isuka for a moment, but knowing her, she would probably chase him around until she got what he had promised her. What are you doing at this side of the sea after the little trick you pulled off in Sabaody? Smoker asked with actual curiosity in his voice, ignoring the pirate's comment about him. Like everyone else, he had read the newspaper, while Smoker held no love for the celestial dragons, he wondered what his problem was with them. Saying that Ace's face actually darkened a bit, the temperature inside the bar increasing by the second. That's none of your business, Marine Captain, now, can we just forget about this and go our separate ways? Ace asked, still sitting on the chair unmoving. No, can't do. As long as I'm a marine and you're a pirate, it is my job to put you down," Smoker answered, his whole arm becoming smoke. You know that's stupid, right? Why can't we just talk this out over a good drink? Ace asked with a smile, the temperature increasing more, sending a wave of his conqueror's hockey around, causing Smoker to stumble back but still keep his composure, preparing to fight. Luffy. Everyone, especially Luffy, immediately noticed the wave of conqueror's hockey. He's here? Luffy suddenly shouted as they were walking around the town, a bright smile on his face. Who, Luffy? Nami asked, seeing her lover smiling brightly like this. My brother, were his last words before disappearing in a flash of lightning. Luffy has a brother? Chapter 29, Big Brother's Ace. The second commander of the Whitebeard Pirates was looking at Smoker with a calculating look, he had hoped to meet Isuka and Luffy here instead since she was sent here to see what was the deal with Crocodile and Alabasta, from what she told him. Apparently the warlord was using the revolution to acquire something, whatever that was, Ace wasn't interested in any of that. What he was interested were Isuka's words before he closed the call. I heard you were looking for Blackbeard? Her voice reached his ears just as he was about to close the call, his eyes suddenly narrowed, who could have told her? He sure as shit didn't tell her, the only ones who can know are the Whitebeard pirates themselves, so unless his father was in direct contact with Isuka for whatever reason, how could she? Ace asked himself before putting the transponder snail back to his ear. How do you know that? He asked slowly with a low dangerous tone, on the other side, he heard her giggle, something he always enjoyed hearing. Don't forget you still have a grandfather who still loves you, she answered with a cute giggle, something she did only when she was with Ace, never in front of anyone else. Ace rolled his eyes at her playful nature, it annoyed him sometimes, reminding him of his little brother, but that always brought a smile on his face but he grimaced slightly when she told him that his grandfather loved him, he was the son of Goldie Roger, how could anyone? Ace, you there? Her voice made him escape his dark thoughts, clearing his throat, he rubbed his nose. Fine, Isuka, now. Are you saying that Garp knows about me looking for Blackbeard? He asked curiously, wondering how Garp could know. Vice Admiral Garp approached me one day, asking about you, at first, I was afraid that he might, you know, but at the end of the discussion. He told me that he was happy that you had taken a liking to me before telling me to keep an eye on you, and your whereabouts, as for your question I got reports from certain places that you were seen there asking about Blackbeard's location. Isuka explained with a respectful tone on her voice, especially when she mentioned Garp's name. Ace rubbed his forehead with sheer annoyance, he wasn't a child anymore, he knew how to protect himself, he had the Mara Mara no me fruit. Tell Garp that he doesn't need to watch over my ass. Ace spoke with a hint of annoyance but hated to admit that he liked that Garp still cared for him. Hmm, does that mean I can watch over your ass? You know I like to anyway, do you have any information on Blackbeard's whereabouts? Ace interrupted her before she got into more details. Ace heard a burst of laughter on the other side of the phone, making him smile. I can tell you, but not here, I'm going to Alabasta to investigate Warlord Crocodile, I will tell you there, Isuka explained, her voice filled with a hint of anger when she mentioned the word Warlord. Ace raised an eyebrow, not understanding why. Wait, why not tell me right now? Ace asked, sure he was going to the Alabasta anyway to meet with his troublesome little brother. I will tell you there, Isabel said playfully, and Ace was sure he heard a giggle before closing the call, just as Ace was about to say something. 
Sighing, Ace tipped his head a bit before deciding that perhaps he should find a restaurant to eat something. A few hours later, he found a restaurant. This one will do, he thought before walking inside. Now, Ace was raising the temperature inside the restaurant by the second the chef had crawled away when he felt the added temperature that made him sweat more than the desert outside. He figured his life was more precious than the restaurant. Smoker gritted his teeth, his arms were entirely smoke, his weapon in his right hand, he knew his chances of winning this fight were too low, if not impossible, but he was a marine first, and as such, it was his duty to fight the evil and bring justice even if it meant death. Ace narrowed his eyes slightly, knowing the captain wasn't going to back down from this fight, he had to give credit to him, he had met many captain and even vice admirals who ran away with their tails between their legs the moment the situation got a bit tough. Come on! Can't we solve this issue over a glass of whiskey or beer? Ace asked playfully as his arms turned to fire, the temperature inside now much hotter than outside, so much that the water inside the restaurant was boiling. Smoker felt himself sweating, despite being a smoked fruit user, he was still sweating. Let's do this, he thought, prepared to make his first move, but just as he was about to make a move, a smug grew on the pirate's face. It seems he's here, he said, the smug not leaving his face. Who the hell are you? He was interrupted by a tap on his shoulder, Smoker dreaded who could be behind him, turning around slowly to see his worst nightmare, the straw had himself smiling like an idiot towards him. Hey, Smokey, he greeted the marine captain, it took a moment for the captain to actually process that the straw hat was right here, just as Smoker was about to attack him. Wind force, Luffy murmured under his breath, shoving his open palm forward, causing Smoker to be sent flying right at Ace, who simply moved out of the way the marine's body crushing to several walls, before finally stopping, evil pirates, he thought, with a big headache. Luffy! Ace? They shouted before hugging each other, pulling away, Luffy was the first to talk. What are you doing so far from paradise? Luffy asked, he had thought that he would eventually meet Ace when he finally reached paradise, but to meet him on this side of the sea was something he didn't expect. Personal business Luffy, what about you? Ace asked, rubbing his ear. Just as Luffy was about to ask what sort of business, they both felt Smoker running towards them. Come here, Straw Hat, Smoker demanded loudly just as Luffy and Ace started running away from the restaurant, soon followed by a whole group of Marines. Find your crew, Luffy. I will deal with them, Ace said to Luffy, the storm user nodded before running away. The others, including Smoker, were about to chase him when a ring of red fire was spread around them, trapping them in, the figure of Ace slowly formed in front of them fire coming out from several of his areas with a smirk. Hate to stop you guys, but can't allow you to go forward, Ace said with a serious tone that made many marines step back in fear, except Smoker, who stood in front of his soldiers, Tashigi standing beside him with a sword on her hand, not backing away. Any other time he would have praised her for her braveness, but this was too dangerous. Everyone stand behind me, Smoker ordered his man, his eyes focused on the pirate in front of him, who, despite being a pirate, didn't have the malice looking eyes he had seen so many times before that he had lost count. Why are you trying to protect Straw Hat Luffy? Smoker asked, pointing his weapon at the pirate. Well, every big brother must protect their little siblings whenever they are in trouble, Ace spoke, taking everyone by surprise. Wait, little sibling, Straw Hat Luffy is your brother? Smoker asked, but more like a statement, the firefruit user simply smirked, not saying anything. Luffy. The crew was waiting for their captain and suddenly saw their captain landing on the ship in a bolt of lightning. Everyone, we are leaving right now, he ordered with a serious tone, everyone jerked up at his tone, instantly doing their job to sail away. Luffy, what happened to your brother? Where is he? Nami asked, checking the waves in the direction. He's close, he just stopped to say hi to Smoker, he will be here soon, Luffy said, not worried for his brother. Luffy, we didn't know you have a brother? Usopp asked. Genuinely surprised, he wondered what this big brother was like. I actually have two big brothers, he said with a smirk raising two fingers from his hand. Two? The crew shouted, except Zoro and Sanji, whose only reaction to the new information was a raised eyebrow. So, who are these brothers of yours? Vivi asked, with a cup of cold tea in her hand. Well, there's Sabo, he works in the Revolutionary Army, he's a Logia user just like me, last I heard, he's the second commander. Luffy answered casually. Revolutionary Army? Vivi almost shouted, she had, of course, heard of them, the group that was formed to free the world from the tyranny of the world's nobles, she briefly wondered if they targeted her kingdom, mainly her father. She didn't know much about the celestial dragons, 
but she once heard from his father that they were rotten to their core. Vivi noticed that her captain said that Sabo worked as the second commander, wait, does that mean? Vivi thought of perhaps asking, but before she could. Luffy nodded without a care, as if what he said wasn't a big deal. Luffy, what about your other brother? Nojiko asked, handing a cup of cold tea to everyone that Sanji had prepared. He's the second commander of the Whitebeard Pirates, Luffy said with a little shrug of his shoulder, while almost everyone gasped in shock. Geez, how is it possible that you know so many powerful people? Usopp asked what probably everyone was thinking right now before raising his hand and counting the number of powerful people the Luffy knew. The straw hat captain simply shrugged his shoulders, it wasn't really a big deal. How strong are your brothers Luffy? Nami asked, handing a cup of cold tea, despite not being bothered by the heat, he still appreciated the tea, his arm moving around her waist, bringing her closer to him, before kissing her cheek, making her giggle. Me, Ace, and Sabo trained since childhood, but because I got the devil fruit much earlier, I was always stronger than them, he stated, just as a flame appeared behind him. How about we test that now? Ace asked behind Luffy, who turned around with a broad smile. Ace, he shouted, shaking his hand with his brother, the others eyed him up and down, despite his casual appearance, they could tell he was powerful. Good to see you, Luffy, Ace said, now they could actually greet each other. Luffy stepped away before introducing his crew to Ace. Everyone, this is my brother Ace, Ace, this is my crew. Zoro is the swordsman, Nami is the navigator. Usopp is the gunman, Sanji is the chef, Najiko is a medic and a fighter, and Chopper is the ship's doctor, Luffy said with everyone else greeting Ace. Quite a crew you got here, Ace said before turning to the crew. I hope my brother isn't giving you all troubles, he can be quite a handful, Ace said in a joking manner, much to Luffy's embarrassment, the others shook their heads, while Luffy could actually sometimes bring trouble, he was the captain they choose to follow with their life. Ace, what is this tattoo on your arm? Luffy asked only now noticing the tattoo across his arm. Ace gave him a devil smirk that the straw hat boy really didn't like. He suddenly felt a chill on his spine, causing him to wince. I made a tattoo of the first letter of our names, A for Ace, S for Sabo, he explained, pointing at each letter on his arm. Where's mine? Luffy asked, he figured the letter E must be for Edward Newgate, he knew from Ace's letters that Whitebeard was like a father to him. See as you, Luffy, Ace added his smirk growing with each passing second. C. Why C? Nami asked with a pointed look. C is for his old nickname, Crybaby, he said with a burst of loud laughter, much to Luffy's annoyance and the crew's amusement. Crybaby, Zora murmured in amusement, he could hardly see his captain as someone who cried a lot. Seeing Ace acting like this with his captain, Sanji suddenly got a flash of a young blonde boy getting kicked by three older boys, calling him a failure. Is this what a brother is like? He asked himself with a melancholy look on his face that he quickly changed to a smiling one. That was a long time ago, and he would never see them again. I didn't cry that much? Luffy protested with a pout. Only every time we trained with Garp, which happened almost every day, he added, still laughing, before looking at Luffy again. So, wanted to join the Whitebeard Pirates? Your friends can come as well? Ace asked, despite knowing the answer. No, thank you. Luffy quickly declined his invitation. Figures as much, tell me, Luffy, what are you all doing here? Ace asked, sure he knew his little brother could be here just to explore a new place, but the timing was a bit suspicious, especially with the growing revolt. Luffy gave him a quick recap of what happened after he passed the Grand Line, when he told him that they had a princess on board, he quickly turned to get a look at the princess in question. She was beautiful, blue-haired, but still not like Isuka, bowing his head respectfully. Princess, I hope my brother is not giving you trouble, he said, kissing her hand, much to her embarrassment. No, not at all, your brother is a good man and captain, she said sincerely with a flush on her cheeks, something Ace noticed, making him smirk, it seemed his brother was more than just a good man and a good captain. Ace, how about you stay with us for a little? We can prepare a feast for you, Luffy suggested with a broad smile, hoping to spend some time with him, Ace was about to refuse the offer but knowing Isuka, she was probably at the next destination. Very well, Luffy, Ace reluctantly agreed, much to Luffy's delight. Sanji, prepare double the food, and don't forget the beer, Luffy ordered, turning to his chef, who nodded before walking inside. Secretly hoping that Ace wasn't a black hole when it came to eating food, but knowing they were brothers, that was just wishful thinking. 
Zoro raised an eyebrow when he heard Luffy ordering beer for Ace, wondering if he would be able to beat him in a drinking match. Night. For Ace, Luffy shouted, with a glass full of beer in his hand, raising it up. For Ace, the rest of the crew shouted, usually, Luffy wasn't someone who drank, but on special occasions, he drank a bit. So Ace, tell me, how did you end up becoming the second commander of the Whitebeard Pirates? Luffy asked, many leaned a bit closer, eager to know how Ace could get in contact with the most powerful man in the world and survive to tell the tale. Believe it or not, at first, I was there to take his head, Ace said, making everyone look at him as if he was crazy, except Luffy, who facepalmed, he should have seen it coming. How the hell are you still alive? Usopp shouted, facing someone like Whitebeard was a death sentence. Rubbing his neck in embarrassment, having so many eyes on him. Well, I wanted to leave my mark on the world and figured killing one of the emperors would be a good start, at first, I targeted Kaido, but in the end, I didn't even face him, Ace stated, many in Luffy's group now fully convinced that Ace had a death wish. Still, Luffy knew there was something Ace didn't tell them when it came to facing Kaido. After that, I went to Fishman Island, since it is one of the islands under Whitebeard's territory, and faced Jinbei, Ace said, almost instantly noticing the frown and angry looks from many of Luffy's crew especially the one with orange hair, her eyes turned cold like ice, making Ace wonder what kind of dispute did Luffy's crew have with Jinbei, giving his brother a brief glance. His face was neutral unlike the others, but Ace could tell Luffy was angry, he decided to ask his little brother later. We fought for seven days and seven nights, at the last day, Whitebeard arrived, back then, I thought that would be it, either I would win or die, I used everything I had, but Whitebeard still beat me when I thought he would kill me, Instead he invited me to his crew as one of his sons, Ace explained with a smile. Not bothering telling them how many times he tried to kill his father while in the ship, each time ending up with a broken nose. Wow, you're quite brave, Usopp commented, many nodding in agreement except Zoro and Luffy, the latter thinking his brother was too reckless, especially doing something as stupid as trying to kill Kaido and Whitebeard. The rest of the night went smoothly. Ace telling stories as a pirate of Whitebeard, then Luffy started telling his own stories about how he found his crew, during the story, Ace noticed the little looks of the navigator, Najiko, and the princess were giving Luffy. Well, well, look who's been busy when I wasn't around, I can't wait to tease him, Ace thought with a smirk on his face. How about a beer challenge? Zoro suddenly suggested looking at his captain's brother, who arched an eyebrow in confusion. Beer challenge? He asked, amused wondering what kind of challenge this was. Each of us is brought a barrel full of beer, the first to finish or the one that lasts the longest wins, Nami explained the rules, excited to start. Understanding the simple rules, he decided to agree. Oh, well, let's do this, Ace agreed, with Luffy and Sanji bringing three barrels and filling up their glasses. Three. Two. One, Zoro ended the countdown, soon, the three were drinking, Luffy cheering for Nami much to Ace's amusement. You can win, Nami, Luffy cheered, followed by the rest, especially Sanji, who is the loudest out of all of them, Chopper and Usopp cheering for Zoro. Stupid witch, Zoro murmured in annoyance when he saw Nami already filling up her third glass while he was still in his second. Damn, she's hardcore, Ace commented, actually surprised to see Luffy's girl drinking so fast. After 30 minutes of drinking and stopping a fight between Zoro and Sanji, Nami slammed her hand down on top of her barrel. I win, she exclaimed, happy to get 10,000 berries from Zoro, who was already done drinking, not finishing the whole barrel. Now that the challenge had ended, Luffy decided to ask Ace something he had been wondering about since the beginning. Ace, earlier you said you were hunting someone, who is he? Luffy suddenly asked. Ace's smile suddenly disappeared like a candle flame, his face darkened and everyone felt the temperature rising slowly until Luffy put his hand on Ace's shoulder, stopping him from making his crew uncomfortable. His name is Marshall D. Teach, he goes by Blackbeard now, he did the ultimate sin of every pirate crew, he killed a fellow crewmate, Ace said darkly, for a moment, his fingertips turned to blue flames but soon turned to normal, knowing it would be uncomfortable to do this amongst his brother's crew. Luffy understood that, and so did everyone, Zoro frowned at the coward. Sanji's only reaction was to lighten a cigarette slowly. Why? Luffy asked his brother, who explained that he did it for a devil fruit, Ace didn't know why that fruit was so important to teach, but that didn't matter, he would make him pay one way or another. Soon the party ended, and the only ones left awake were Luffy and Ace, standing on the main deck. Quite a crew you got here, Ace commented, 
turning his hand aflame to brighten the night. Luffy nodded his head, on his hands a bone with meat, his eyes looking forward, knowing they were alone, Ace decided to ask what was going through his head. By the way, I saw the way the navigator and the two blue-haired girls were looking at you, he teased him with a smirk, nudging his brother slightly, Luffy chuckled, his mouth full of meat. Nami and Nojiko are my lovers, as for Vivi. I'm not sure, Luffy explained, smiling, sure he liked Vivi, but he knew her mind was already full with saving her country. Well, look who became a man when I wasn't around, Ace cheered, putting his arm around his neck, pulling him closer. I'm so happy, my little brother has become a man, he cheered, wiping away fake tears from his eyes, much to Luffy's embarrassment. Hey, stop picking on me, what about you? You're the only one out of three of us still single? Luffy asked teasingly, knowing Sabo was dating someone named Koala. He didn't know who she was, but apparently, she was his comrade. Ace looked offended for a moment, his hand over his heart in a dramatic fashion, before smirking. Actually, I'm not single anymore. I know a girl I like. She's a marine captain, Ace stated, knowing how his brother would react, how everyone would react. Luffy started coughing roughly swallowing the meat before looking at Ace as if he was crazy. A marine captain. How the hell did that happen? Luffy asked, but more like shouting at him. To Luffy, this was like straight out of a boring romance novel that Maki no used to read to them when they were a little younger. Ace laughed at his reaction, he couldn't wait to see Sabo's reaction. Well, she was actually chasing me, trying to capture me, at first it was nothing, but from the beginning, I quite liked her fierce personality, we went back and forth, fighting and talking during the fighting. At the third fight, I started using my amazing flirting techniques, slowly working. That was until one day, an enemy pirate crew went after me, Ace said with a grimace. Why? I killed their captain a while back, the fool attacked me for my bounty, and his crew was hunting me down, trying to kill me, me and Isuko were fighting again. I got careless, I usually stay in the same place only for a short time, but because I enjoyed our fight, I ended up staying there for a whole month. He explained, his body getting hotter, flames spreading out from his arm. What happened next? Well, three soldiers of Isuka were killed by the pirate crew due to them trying to arrest them. Isuka was devastated and launched an attack on them. I was there and fought alongside her, even saving several of her soldiers. By the end, the strongest of the other crew tried to attack me from behind, but Isuka simply used her sword and her devil fruit to kill him. After that day, we decided to talk again. I called her every now and then. After two years since we first meet, she congratulated me for becoming the second commander of Whitebeard Pirates. We secretly meet after a month, that day we. Ace trailed off, already making it clear what happened next, with a little blush on his face, remembering the night, suddenly Luffy slapped his shoulder. Congratulations, I honestly thought you would be single your whole life, he teased, making Ace groan, grabbing his head with his arm, and rubbing his hair. Look, who's talking? Someone who cried when the doctor explained how that's not talk about it, Luffy silenced him, muffling his laughter with his hand soon, the laughter ended. Luffy, when I mentioned that I fought against Jinbei, your crew got angry, why is that? Ace asked slowly, knowing this could be a sour subject, wondering if, for some reason, his brother was after him, he knew Jinbei, and he was a good fisherman. Luffy sighed before explaining the whole deal with Arlong, how he had tortured Nami and enslaved her village. Ace's face changed, his eyes narrowing, he hadn't expected Jinbei to be so careless. I can talk to him if you want, he offered, but Luffy shook his head. No, this is Nami's business, she will be the one to decide it, he explained with a neutral tone, Ace nodded in understanding, hoping his navigator wouldn't try to kill Jinbei. Silence took over them, only the sound of waves rocking against the ship was heard. Ace looked on the horizon, knowing it was his time to leave. Turning to Luffy. He grabbed something from his pocket, handing it to Luffy. Huh? A paper? Luffy questioned Ace after he handed what looked like a blank sheet of paper. Not just any letter, this is a Viva card, Ace explained. It will direct you to my location, no matter where you are, ensuring that we will meet again. Luffy placed it on his palm, and much to his surprise, it started slowly inching towards Ace despite the gentle wind, which was going in the opposite direction. Take care of yourself, little brother. Ace said before jumping from the deck on his little boat, it had a weird engine. You're leaving? Luffy asked, his mood dropping. Stay at least one more night. Sorry, Luffy, but I have to find Blackbeard. Once I deal with him, all three of us can meet together and spend time like when we were young, Ace suggested, 
making Luffy smile. You're right, that would be amazing, Luffy shouted as Ace used his devil fruit to make his boat sail forward. Good luck, Luffy, Ace shouted, waving at Luffy. Good luck, Ace, Luffy shouted back, waving and holding his Viva card in his right hand. Can't wait for the three of us to meet again, Luffy thought, smiling like a boy full of joy. Well guys that is it, for now, make sure to like and subscribe for a cookie and join the discord if you want, and check out my patreon anyway see you guys later.